everyone, I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You, and I'm your host of the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Here's where we talk about the connection between creativity and healing by interviewing amazing creatives, spectacular healers, and inspiring people who have used creativity in their healing. What does it mean to be creative? What is creativity? You don't have to write a best-selling book or paint a masterpiece or even play in a rock band. Creativity is in everything that we do, in the ways we think, in the way we run a business, in our everyday lives, we are creative all the time. Let's talk about how we are creative and how creativity helps us heal mentally, physically, and emotionally, right now on the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Hi everyone, I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You, and welcome to the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Today I have with me Christina Miles. Christina was one of our presenters for the Loving Healing Creating Summit that we ran February 2 through 14, and we absolutely loved having her. You can still get access to that summit at www.creativeview.ca. So Christina has been married to her sailor for 37 years. Christina has worked in special education for 25 years as a paraeducator, and last year she became an assistive technology assistant. She works with iPads and other techie stuff. She's always been a creative person, so doing this switch was fairly easy for her. Being a creative, Christina sees art in many different ways and forms. She says that photography is her first love. She never goes anywhere without a camera. Her photos have changed over the years, which is the same as her creativity. About six years ago, she started making art dolls. She submitted them to an online auction and sold every single one of them. Then about three months after that, she was asked to make a custom doll, but was asked was to ask the doll what it wanted to be. So in other words, as she created the doll, she had to ask it, what color of hair do you want? What do you want to wear, etc. That is when it dawned on her that the reality of making these dolls is that she is not the creator of them. They create themselves. Christina says to ask a question and have it answered in your head is the strangest thing, but was also amazing. This changed her thinking about life itself. So she started taking more classes online and has learned that mixed media is where her strengths are. And just by asking the piece, what do you want? It changes everything. Welcome, Christina. Hi. Hi. Hey, here. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here. Thank Can you. you share some of your story and your path that led you here? Well, when, when I was a kid, uh, I got to help my dad out a lot in the garage. I was like his second son. And one of the things that um, kind of stuck with me, I guess, throughout my life is that if something is broken, I, I'm able to fix it. Most likely, not always, but sometimes I'm able to fix it. And also, I was never afraid to get my hands dirty. So with dealing with all the artsy stuff, I just like to dig in. So I have no fear. In my younger days, my dad actually uh, used to drink a lot. And so when, when he did all that, you know, in his partying days, he was not always the nicest person. So um, I had to do a lot of struggling in my life when I was younger and deal with a lot of negative stuff. And uh, anyways, so as I got older, like in high school, I started, that's kind of where my artistic path started. So uh, I took a lot of classes. Um, I took ceramics, photography, graphic, not graphics, but back then they didn't have graphics. Um, not in high school. <laughs> Mechanical drawing and all these fun artsy classes. I did sewing and cooking and all that. And I think that's where everything kind of started falling into place in my life where I wanted to do more. And of course, with photography, that was like... Um, when I got my very first camera, it was like love at first sight type of thing. I just like latched onto it and learned how to use it. And back then you had to do it the old fashioned way and it was so much harder to do. But um, one of the things that, even though my dad was not always the nicest person in the world when, when I was younger, um, he still supported me with all my stuff that I went through in school. So, for instance, I, I got to create my own dark room out of the bathroom, <laughs> which was kind of crazy because when everybody, when anybody wanted to use the bathroom, I was in there doing my stuff. And so I had to kind of time it just right when nobody else was home, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And then um, 
when I was around 18, my husband, my now husband, moved in across the street. So I kind of married the boy next door because two and a half years later, we got married. And, uh, and that's kind of where everything just fell into place. And so all the negative stuff in my life kind of disappeared. And uh, I had two kids, I have two boys. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get to uh, the building of the dolls and then to the mixed media? So the building of the dolls, these, I started making these dolls when my boys were young. And uh, that kind of started with, they were watching um, The Little Mermaid. And so I had my nephews over to it at the same time. And they were asking me to make this mermaid doll. So next thing I know, I'm making these mermaid dolls. And I sold a bunch of those, just sold them at craft fairs and stuff like that. And then uh, probably maybe 10 years later, uh, I started um, creating the, the dolls, the altered art dolls with wine corks. And so they changed from fabric dolls to the mixed media dolls. And that is where I think I combined everything that I did and put them into those dolls. And then knowing that those were like mixed media pieces, I just kind of evolved into taking classes online and, and um, started taking those type of classes and everything just kind of fell into place from there. Mm, that's great. When I go media now, because <laughs> yeah. I've done painting, I've done acrylic painting. I've, um, I've done it where it was like the watercolor style, where not watercolor style, but I mean like the, coloring book style painting where you put a solid color on there and then you shade it and highlight it and do all that. And I can do highly detailed stuff, but I think after a while when you do all these things, you just want to do something different. You don't want to always do the same thing all the time. And I'm more of a freestyle person. So I like to just get in there and do it. And I don't want it to be perfect. It's just got to be sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> so mixed media is very sloppy, right? Exactly. And, and I learned, I learned uh, like doing wax, um, wax and hot wax and all that just all kind of falls in place. And I just love it. Yeah. Just the, it's, it's funny how so many people, like when I talk to them, they, they did a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And mixed media seems to be where they end up because you get to do a little bit of everything. <laughs> You know? Yeah, you do. You really do. Even with the dolls, mm -hmm. um, I do uh, like the cork dolls. I do um, what I want to say um, decoupage. You know, you decoupage the bodies and you color them. You do the faces, and I work with clay and I can sew. So all of those things just all go into those dolls. It's just so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. What does healing with creativity mean to you? So uh, creative, creativity is a life-changing activity. Without it, I don't know where I would be today. And uh, it has improved like numerous healing experiences for me. Creativity allows me to work through feelings of good and bad, which can only start with believing in myself mm -hmm. and the willingness to explore more. Mm -hmm. um, I wholeheartedly believe that everyone has the ability to create. I encourage healing through the exploration of your own creativity. Viewing others' art feels or feeds the soul and serves as an inspiration to create. Do you think there's a driving force that inspires you? Um, yes, yes. Actually, um, I, I think the driving force that it, it, it inspires me is um, like my grandparents and my aunt. They are a big part of my life. And they're both gone. They're all gone now. Mm -hmm. And I still feel that they're with me. And so I think they support me in a lot of ways. And sometimes when I'm doing something or creating something, I will just talk out loud. and think it out and sometimes it comes to me and sometimes it doesn't. And I think 
in a way, it's mostly my aunt. I really strongly think that she's there telling me in the back of my mind, you got to do it this way. You got to do it that way, you know? And um, I think that helps me a lot with all of that. And uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's, a, that's a nice driving force though. Family I, and heritage and, and that connection. That's a, that's an amazing driving force. Yeah. Yeah. And I always have support. My sisters always support me and my friends, you know, and uh, mostly my friend that lives back East. She, she and I have this um, bond that's more like a creative type bond that mm -hmm. 3000 miles apart from each other. So I can tell her my idea and she'll say, no, you got to do it this way. And we just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So we, we, we have that connection, you know, and so we kind of create together. Oh, that's really awesome. And yeah. it allows you to sort of perfect things with some feedback and, and get mm -hmm. things the way you want them. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a past pain that's informed your life purpose? I know you talked about your dad a little bit. Um, Yes. Um, I mean, when my dad, he's, he's a, he's a good person. Okay. But in his drinking days, he was not a good person. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, so a lot of that negative part of my life, it's still there, mm -hmm. you know, it still haunts me from time to time. And, um, so I think part of that is what helped me get into the field I'm in today with special ed, because I do see that even with kids these days mm -hmm. and they're bullied, they're teased and all that stuff. And um, I think by helping them out, it helps me out too, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with so many kids and I've helped them with art projects and stuff like that. I, I actually brought a lot of artsy stuff into the classrooms mm -hmm. and worked in and the teachers that I worked with were very supportive. And so it's so fun, so fun to see these young people who you think would can't do anything, do something and they just light up mm -hmm. and it helps them, you know, it helps them to become a happier person. And uh, that's kind of, I think what kind of guides me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so true. Um, when you, when you talk about taking art into the classroom and, and art and creativity just changes people. If you can let go of your inhibitions, like it just literally changes you. It and, does. Yeah. It really, I, I had one student that I worked with that, um, he had CP and he was very, uh, not able to do hardly anything. His body was really contracted and stuff, but I would help him like hold a crayon in his hand and hold a piece of paper away from him so he could reach out and touch it and he would color with it. Mm -hmm. And you could just see his eyes light up and you just tell him, look what you did. This is awesome. And, and so it just brings that energy into the classroom, more positive and it's just fun. Yeah. I yeah. kind of miss, it. I'm not in a classroom now, so I kind of miss that part of it, you know, but it, it's reach great. out to people online then. That'll be your, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite creative healing modality for yourself? Um, I would say it's, it's uh, my camera. Yeah. So uh, viewing things through the lens of my camera and I take it everywhere I go. My camera is like my best friend. It captures my best memories, which allows me to create the positive parts of my life mm -hmm. and creates the memories, you know? Yeah. It's, it's amazing the things you can do with camera. Um, I, I quite often in, when I'm teaching, we'll get people to take out their phone and mm -hmm. take pictures of nothing in particular, like not a person or like, you know, but just find something interesting, like an angle or a color or something like that. And it just kickstarts so many things. Yes. And also the, the whole memories, like we always like to look back at photos and, and, and remember things. So 
Photography is an awesome one. Yeah, I can, I can totally understand <laughs> well, that. Well, I, I like um, that, t- you know, that uh, Wabi Sabi, mm-hmm. right? I just think that is so interesting because I've probably been doing that for years and didn't know it. Didn't even know it was like a technique, Wabi Sabi. What the heck is that? Yeah. So, um, but now I, I will take more pictures of stuff like that. And I try to create that in my art form too. So I'll, I'll go from the photo into the art piece. Right. Yeah. I know I had taken um, uh, Illustrator and Photoshop courses quite yeah. a few years ago because I wanted to take my photography and add art into the photography. I decided yes. that was not the medium for me, but learning it was very cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little have, too structured for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but then there's, there's this one, um, what is it? Artist, um, shoot, artistry, something. God, my brain's gone blank. Um, I took that online. It's a, it's a whole different way of looking at photography. You, I put all these images into these wine bottles. It was pretty cool. Oh. And so, yeah, you, I took a picture of wine bottles and then I just in, incorporated the images like a dancer, um, a creepy face, things like that. All in, They're ghosted into the wine bottles and then I added a texture onto it. So it's a whole different look and uh, it was pretty cool. I really enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Yeah, I'm more of a get messy kind of person, I decided, but yeah. I have tried just about everything. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we enjoy, right? Exactly. As creatives, it's so true. And yeah. what would you say is your greatest accomplishment to date? So um, I, I'm not going to talk about art in this sense. Okay. Um, one thing that really sticks in my mind that I feel is a great accomplishment is um, one day my husband and I were out to dinner. Um, this is probably eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And this young man that served us to our table he says come have a seat over here mrs miles and i looked at him like who the heck are you i've never met you before and he realized that i didn't recognize him he says i know you don't remember me he says um this is so cool I, every time i think about this is just ah. so he says you worked with a student when i was in elementary school and you left a great impression upon me and so because I work in special ed I worked with this one particular student and he would come into our class he was only eight years old mm-hmm. and he would come into our classroom and he would volunteer and I would sit with him and the other student and we would just play games and stuff like that and, and for him to remember me all these years later from from eight years old and he was like 20 something years old and it's just like, wow, you remembered me from back then. And, and I left this great impression on this young man and I never knew it. You know, I just never felt that I had left that kind of, you mm-hmm. know, thing, young people. So it just makes me feel good. Yeah, it literally gave me goosebumps as you were telling that story. I was like, oh. <laughs> It really, it really is. I finally told my boss um, probably about a month ago because I keep think, forgetting about it and I don't get to see her very often. And so I told her about that and she's like, that's what we do. That's just what we do. And I said, you're right. You know, that's the whole reason why we're in that field is, is to help these young people see things differently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, that is a, that's a great accomplishment. I love that one. <laughs> Thank you. If you could change one aspect of our society through your work, what would it be? Uh, it would be um, to always be true to yourself. I think that a lot of times we, we try to be someone else we're not. Mm-hmm. Copying other people's work and, and not necessarily copying, but I mean, you do learn from that. You do learn the skills from copying other people's things, but, but always be true to yourself. And mm-hmm. everybody does that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think there's too many people out there that just, they just don't know how to express their own 
feelings, I think, or their own selves that um, the good parts of them. <laughs> it's so true. You know, it, I mean, it's great to look at other people's work and, and you can maybe copy it till you get a technique down, but then you have to like, well, put yourself into your work. I, it's never, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. never really done until you put yourself into it. I don't think. Yeah. 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 That is true. Yeah, absolutely. And do you have an inspirational quote that sums up your life journey? This is funny because my friend and I, like I said, we, we think a lot alike. And um, so this, this quote is from Shakespeare's uh, Midnight Summer Dream. Or, yeah. No, I always call it Midnight Summer Dream. Midsummer's Bright Dream. Okay. She may be small, but she is mighty. Yeah. That is definitely me. Mm -hmm. I'm only five foot tall. <laughs> I'm not very <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So you know when you're when you're young, I'll never forget the the day my I drove this van, uh, loaded up everybody in the van, and my grandpa says, "You're driving." I said, "Yes, I'm driving." I think I was 16, 17, and he looks at me and says, "You are driving this van." I said, "Get in the car," <laughs> and everybody piled in, and I drove away. And so it was just kind of funny because I could barely see over the steering wheel you know right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that's me. <laughs> oh that's awesome is there anything else you'd like to add that we maybe haven't discussed today that you want to share with our listeners well yeah um my artwork that i do is not really a focus on just me uh it, it's like a tool to empower others and to express themselves that feels right to them. I once had an experience at an art show that I was showca showcasing my, my mermaid dolls that I was telling you about, the, the first ones that I made. Mm -hmm. And I had this young girl come up to my booth. She was probably 12 years old. And she's like, mommy, mommy, look at these mermaids. I want one of these dolls. And the mom looks at her and, and kind of, grabs her hand, she says, oh, you're too old for mermaids, and to, takes off with her. And I just wanted to go over there and just let her mom have it, you know? How dare you tell your daughter she's too old for mermaids? Nobody's too old for mermaids or fantasy stuff. Um, I, I think that that is something, too, that, you know, you just need to be yourself. Let, if your daughter wants to, a mermaid at 12 years old, let her have a mermaid. They weren't little girl toys, you know. These mm -hmm. were sculpted, sculpted mermaids. They were like a piece of artwork. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it was kind of insulting to me. And I really felt bad for the little girl, too. Yeah. And she was a little bit. You know, I just think that we all need to um, let her inner child always show, you know? Yeah. Not to hide it and force that upon your kids. So true. I have two boys and you know they're they're both in their thirties now and they still watch anime and they still have their robots and things like that. It's like, yeah, that's cool. I think that they should be able to have stuff and memories of their childhood and, you know, not to let those things. Yeah. You know, and they're both mature. They're both professionals. And so you can be a professional and you can be a kid at the same time. Exactly. That's my. <laughs> I, I teach my grandkids all about rainbow unicorns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, um, it, yeah, it's the same, same idea. So, yeah. Well, yes. I want to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And to our listeners, uh, we will see you next week. And in the meantime, I wish for you amazingly creative days. Have a great week.